Okay. Well, I want to thank you for coming to talk with us about your experience with your transition into retirement. So we'll begin by, can you tell us your name, your department, years of service to the university? Okay. Uh, Cynthia Ray Margolin, known as Cindy. Um, I was at the university for 35 years. The first couple years and the last couple of years were part-time. But they all counted as as years of service. service. And I was in an experimental program called New College. Then I went from there through the Administrative Fellows Program at CSU. Then I came back to counseling, psychology, child development, ended up in undergraduate studies, basically running the general education program. Mm -hmm. And finished off by doing the first iteration of the online uh, audit program. Mm -hmm. And I want to add that you are also part of the PRTB program, yes. the pre-reduction re reduction in time base program. Right. I did that because I was too young to do the FERP uh, as far as reducing my time mm -hmm. so I could do other things. Mm -hmm. But this was better for me. Well, and now tell us some of the important considerations that guided your decision to retire. My age was a big thing because I started very young and unless you go, if you look at the charts, you look at age 63, it just sort of levels out and I so I had to get to 63 mm -hmm. and I was ready to do all this around 60 so and I wanted to go part-time so that I could start taking the classes that I had been involved in developing that I really liked uh -huh. and so uh, three years before retirement, I went onto this reduced time base. So I played in for full benefits and everything. And I didn't get any retirement, but I could, by that time, and that's the second factor, I could live on a lot less. I got my kids through college, paid for, independent. I paid off my house. Mm -hmm. That was a really, really big thing. What was the other thing? I was debt, f I know I was debt free, paid off the house. Oh, that, yeah. And then I was able to reduce my time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and take classes, and that was great. And can you describe your transition when you first started thinking about it until you actually retired? And that might mean, did you talk to HR? Did you talk to CalPERS? Um, the steps, actually, and then when did you fully retire? So what was that whole okay. process? It was about a 10-year process Ten years. Mm -hmm. because I ran into Mara Southern who was the director of testing and she was a friend and she had a 10-year plan. So I thought, oh, that sounds good. So in 10 years, I'll be old enough to do this. So we sort of said, now what do you do? Because my my investment person wanted me to go out at 60. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not ready. So we did that. Um, I moved to Santa Cruz. I bought a house that I thought was going to be for retirement, and I said, it's too beautiful, so I'm just going to move here now. Um, I did a lot of traveling, and um, I was very discouraged about the state of the liberal arts. As being running the general education program, I was always defending it. And why can't the major have more? And why all the students who would come in? Why... Why can't they write? Why do they? Eat? Why does a kindergarten, potential kindergarten teacher, doesn't want to take math? All these things, and what the beauty of the liberal arts was, and that's why I loved being in undergraduate studies as the associate dean. I was not beholden to any department, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I really liked it. And I got to know people all over the university, mm -hmm. and that was so cool. And I worked with Lee DeRose. Who was wonderful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I talked, I had a lot of advice from Jean Takeda in Human Resources. Yeah. Yeah. She told me to get married because then my, if I did it a year before I retired, my husband would get benefits. But we didn't take her advice. We got married after I retired, which means he doesn't get any benefits. That was probably a mistake. So there are a lot of things you learned along the way. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. And let's talk about the actual experience of retirement. Was it different than your pre-retirement idea of what it would be like? You had an um, idea of retirement. And yeah, then... um, because I was only working half-time and taking classes, 
and I started my volunteer work during that period of time, which is I'm a court-appointed special advocate mm -hmm. for kids. Mm -hmm. Everything I do has to do with kids. That's my thing. And um, I, I took on one, like one project at a time, so I eased into it. Mm -hmm. I'm now, what, I retired in 2004, so I'm now almost 10 years into it, and I may have bit off a little too much now. So now I'm going to have to start learning, as a friend said, to retire from some of my retirement <laughs> activities. <laughs> I love that when she said that. I thought that was That's really... a great term. It was a wonderful, wonderful term. Of course, she's 90 years old, but, you know, and I, I haven't reached that yet. But what did I do? I haven't done as much serious photography as I'd want to, but I do run the digital photography um, interest group for the lifelong learner. I'm very involved in lifelong learners at mm -hmm. UCSC. Mm -hmm. So I do that for them. I teach at Long's Marine Lab, field trips for school children who come out. And I'm the, the special advocate. So those things keep me, and a garden. And I, go. I have a brown thumb, but I learned. And I got married. So I don't travel as much, because my husband doesn't like to travel. Mm -hmm. But, so the house has become much more important. And he's a great appreciator of gourmet food. So I, and I love to cook. And I've got the greatest kitchen in the world. So I'm out in the woods, in a great big house that we bought, 4,000 square feet for two people, and a dog. Well, it sounds like you've been, talk you've been talking about some of what's been easy about the transition yeah. into retirement. Then what's been difficult? Lack of structure. Oh. Uh -huh. um, my husband said, oh my gosh, you're going here, you're going here, you're always doing this. And I said, I know, and I don't feel as organized as I did. And I'm a very organized kind of person. And um, so I try to structure things. Mm -hmm. So you know, I have my day at the lab. I have my day with my Kazakh kid. I have my day for my lifelong learners photo group. But all that in between, so I can do a lot of crossword puzzles in the morning. Because it really doesn't have to be done today. You could do it tomorrow. And that's frustrating to me. At the end of the day, I say, Cindy, you've wasted all this. I have this feeling that I've wasted a lot of time. And, um, but that's all. It's, this, it's the structure. Because I have plenty of time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm not using it to the fullest. So, spoken like a true uh -huh. And what do you wish you'd known earlier before you retired? And what do you think other faculty need to know about this transition in order to for them to be better prepared? Well, what I've, when I've compared notes with friends, I think that people have all these wonderful ideas of what they're going to do when they, oh boy, I'm not going to have this anymore. So I can do all this stuff. And they get overwhelmed very quickly. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they don't get stuff done, and then they feel bad. By taking on one, I only added, I was a CASA. Then I took on the Marine Lab, mm -hmm. and I did the Marine Lab. I took a year off of CASA to do the Marine Lab. Ah. Then they had a special case they really wanted me for, so I came back, so I'm doing those two. And then somebody needed a digi uh, big screen TV for the photo group, so I volunteered for that. So one thing at a time. Don't overwhelm with, no matter how wonderful the projects sound, take one thing at a time. I think that's really good advice. Yes. And you, you've got so many things, you have many things that keep you active now. Um, are you still connected with San Jose State University and in what way? I am on the IRFA, the Retired Faculty Board, and um, I, I did condolences for I don't like condolences. I didn't like that job. But I take on the job like I do all the RSVPs for the people who come to the affairs. And I, they send me little notes. When they put on, they say, Hi, Cindy, how are you doing? And that's really, I like that. I, I really like it. And then I don't have to sit through so many meetings. Right. I can do more, you know, I can do that on my own, well, on my own time. And I come to those events, but I don't have a lot of connection. I'm... I was determined to be part of a community, and Santa Cruz, I designated Santa, I moved there uh, before I retired, and I decided it's a small town yeah. mentality, at least, and that 
that was the community that I was going to become part of. Well, I want to thank you so much, Dr. Okay. Cindy Margolin, Emeritus Professor from New College, from Child and Adolescent Psychology, uh, Child and Adolescent Development, excuse me, from the Psychology Department at San Jose State, State University. Thank okay. you. Okay, you're welcome.